Hello, 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 guys. My name's Aquia Jamfi, founder of the British Blacklist. And I'm really, really, like, auntie pleased to be here with you guys. Very proud of you lot. Go around the room, please, and introduce yourself. Say who you are and what role you play in Grime Kids. I'm Tien, and I'm playing Bishop. I'm Shanu, and I play Kai. I'm Gabriel, and I play Junior. I'm Yus, and I play Dane. I'm Delav, and I play Genevieve. <laughs> so this series, Grime Kids, based on DJ Target's book about his life coming up in the industry and the influence that him and his group Roll Deep had on the music industry, what was it like when you guys heard about the script, heard about the story? Um, I was really excited. Um, so I found, I found the cast calling through the casting call, sorry, through Instagram. Mm. So after seeing it and kind of reading it, and obviously knowing who Target was. I was very intrigued by it. I was like, you know what, let, let, let's, give it, let's give it a bit of a shot. And then I went into the auditions and I was reading the scripts and I was just saying, this is fantastic. This is actually something that I really want to be a part of. So it was that, it was that initial excitement, I'd say. I'll guess I'll say from the auditions, I wasn't sure what it was going to be because obviously it just said Grime Kids. I wasn't quite sure what that meant. Obviously, I'd heard of the book, but I hadn't read it. Um, but it, I didn't get really excited until our, that first read through that we did, mm. the first episodes that we read where I was like, yeah, this is this is proper. Like the writing, got a big up Teresa always was fantastic, and I think it just showed it. It, sh it was so it was not not necessarily modern, but it had like a modern feel about it and just life. Like we talk about all the time, it was just so realistic. There was just real things going on throughout. So I think that kind of excited me more than the grime stuff or anything like that. It was just the stories that really that really got me excited about it. So for, for those like. Obviously, it's a different era, a different generation, different time of music. It's my time, guys. Yeah. <laughs> How did it resonate with you in that respect? Because you said it was like, it was modern, but old school. Mm. But that, that's the thing. It's capturing a time that, for me, was so poignant, so important to the shape of my life. And the fact that it resonates with you guys. How did you guys connect with the script and story? Um, I think the family elements mm. about it between all of the characters going on is something that ties everything together, music-wise and personality-wise. Because uh, with the grime side of music, that reminds me more like some of my older brothers mm -hmm. or like older, just older friends that I have. Like they'll hear some of the songs that maybe I've, that we had in our playlist or something. They'll be like, okay, I know that song. I use that, and start doing the dance moves that they used to do and whatnot. And, but then you, you say in one of the characters' homes, you'll hear the reggae that my mum would be playing mm -hmm. or the songs like that. Um, where you, you get taken back to a time from a bit before when you were around, but since it's been influenced on you from when you were so young, it feels like homely mm -hmm. or family-like in a way anyway. So I think that ties everything together. For me, it was definitely, I think from growing up, I used to listen to like the Wileys, the Skeptors, the Road Deets, but maybe not in their beginning years. So it was nice to know that I was gonna start starring something like just to show the true foundation of like, a part of the UK culture that I don't think had been presented before. So it was really nice to kind of like be attached to something that's going to show show the country or the world that just something that hasn't really been touched on. And the fact that we had to obviously do the work and learn, learn about it ourselves, because I was learning things all throughout the process. Mm -hmm. So that was interesting as well. So to be able to share that information, that knowledge, I think that really drew me to the project for sure. Um, so I've watched the first two episodes and I was enthralled. I was engaged. I was like, you guys are really capturing the moment. Um, so it's very, like I keep, I'm going to keep saying it's very, very special to see a series like this exist because it's capturing our history and British UK culture, which isn't usually captured in this way. We normally look at American um, shows for this kind of nostalgic pieces. So you said that you learned some things about, um, the situ about the time. What did you learn, all of you? What did you learn new? So it was a lot to learn about because I was born in 1999 oh. so <laughs> it was just refreshing it was nice to like see um like the rhythm division and stuff like that and um it was nice being on set with target when you know he was like you know teaching us how to like dj and stuff it was really nice so, real djing yeah, guys real yeah, djing real djing for real yeah so it was it was nice yeah um the one thing i take away as as um the love just said i'd Sorry. i'd say uh, Rhythm Division was a big staple of the community. Um, it wasn't until I think we was filming and someone like took a picture of Rhythm Division because they hadn't seen it. 
and on Twitter, people were just going crazy. Oh, I can't believe this. It's, it was, so it was, it was nice to see. It was literally nice to see. So for me, that, that's the one thing I take away. How big of a staple Griffin division was. I think I would say something that I learned definitely through shooting would have been kind of like that rave culture, like mm -hmm. and and like what how they dress, like how different it is to now if you go out and like what people were wearing compared to what the costume had us wearing on our raves and stuff like that. So I think seeing that kind of stuff, which was just so different, especially like similar to the love. I was born in 2002, so I, oh, do you know what I mean, I, 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 I was very different now than it was then, especially just with what you're wearing, um, and yeah, there's just the champagne and all of that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, I think the rave culture was the thing that I probably learned the most about. I would say, in a sense, obviously my character has, um, obviously music is, mm. is, a, is a big factor of my character. And I had to do a bit of, um, let's say, revision on how we used to rap in the grime scene back in the day. And I think I took a lot from that because it's very, it, there's similarities, but it's, it's a lot more, what do I say? It's, it's, it's raw. I was about to say more meaningful. Meaningful? Oh, okay, yeah. That's what the old people say. Back in our day. Meaningful as well. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was, it was a very nice... It was really nice to be able to, like, just see something that I hadn't lived through and be able to learn and see what, let's say, the older generation had to... Like, literally, they lived in. They literally went through it day in, day out. So it was nice to be able to feel how they felt for, for a change. I think sometimes it could be quite difficult to try and understand the things that come before you. Yeah. Like uh, some, when I think about like when my parents might give me, um, say, oh, back in my day, it was like this. Or, or when your brother <laughs> say, oh, yeah, I, you, I would have never got that. Da, 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 you get that now. It, and when you find yourself like, I only come from this time. I only come from my present. So I don't really understand anything that happened before you. But since the, sh the set and everything looked so much like a time capsule and there were times that we filmed on Roman Road and stuff, like mm. you can see the community, the sense of community, and like people on the street, the different, um, the different, I don't wanna say races, but um, different, cultures and, different, cu different yeah. cultures and communities and stuff, just, just on that strip alone, mm. just made you feel like you were part of something. And I think it helped me develop like an empathic understanding with these people. Mm. And it was kind of like tied the two times of like past and present together. So then it didn't feel like it was something outside of the room. It just felt like something that you were kind of like immersed in. And so, okay, let's go for into individual characters. Yes, tell me about Dane. What's his motivation? What he's about? And what's his kind of role in the series? Um, Dane, I'd say, is a dreamer, a, a very big dreamer. Anything that Dane puts his mind to, he wants to achieve. Uh, in some cases, no matter what the sacrifice may be. Um, he loves his friends also, um, but he does love pushing towards one thing and in in any way, shape or form, if he can get his friends together in order for everyone to push this dream, then he will do so. Okay, that's a nice wrap up. Shanu, um, Kai. Um, Kai, very, very charismatic young fellow. Um, <laughs> he, he obviously comes into the show very early on, kind of like disrupts the kind of dynamic between the group. But um, I think there's definitely many layers to the character. He comes across as a very confident, very outgoing young man, but I think as you, as the series unfolds, you see like his true nature and why he acts the way he acts and certain insecurities and just things that I guess he's struggling to face, but that eventually unravels as the show goes on, so yeah. I'm intrigued, I'm intrigued. Mm -hmm. Gabriel and Junior. Um, I would say Junior is loyal. He's a very loyal, loyal friend, mm -hmm. but he is mourning, like he's mourning his mum. So I think that, kind of changes the way he can be with his friends and might be a little bit more attached or a little bit more needing of his friends because I think Junior definitely used his friends as his coping mechanism. Uh, so obviously when that might get mixed up a bit because of dynamics that can happen with, with Kai coming into the group, I think that just kind of, you see, you see him change a little bit and try and deal with it in different ways. Uh, and yeah, I'll, I'll give you that. That's right. Tien and Bishop. Um. I think one of the most refreshing things that I was able to read off the page, I felt this actually from in the audition period, where I read a scene between Bishop and his mother and seeing the strength, but love, protection, guidance, but also like vulnerability that Benice brings into the house. And I think that shapes a lot of Bishop's character. Um, I think he comes from a really loving family and 
feels like a responsibility as an older brother and also a son of his parents to kind of do good by them and sort of repay the faith and, and love that they put into him. Um, I think amongst the group, it's, it's a very different dynamic. Mm. When you're around your friends, there's a certain freedom or abandonment that you can experience, but then sort of that pull at home can do something else to you. You guys are really good at giving intrigue to your characters. It's, like, it's real good teasers. And um, Delove, sorry, I called you Genevieve, so I'm so believing yeah, in your okay. character. Delove, tell us yeah. about Genevieve. Genevieve, she um, is just minding her business. Mm -hmm. And then Kai and Dave, I'm joking. <laughs> she's Come just, and bother her. They're just <laughs> bothering her. She's just bothering her. But no, she's, um, she comes across very like um, head on and just... Um, she knows what she, she mm -hmm. wants and stuff, but she you later on realise that um, you see why she's so serious sometimes. Um, but she's just lovely and just nice. Um, she loves fashion. She's just so real. Um, but yeah, later on you just find a few more things about her that I can't see. These teasers, these teasers. <laughs> so guys, this is, is this the... The core of the story is about brotherly love, friendship, and we don't get to see young guys showing the emotional sides, and it's not just you know, like one way, like aggressive violence and anger. There's emotions between the friendship group. Um, how did you guys explore this bond and bring this bond to life? Because you guys' chemistry on screen really comes through the screen. It really, really is resonates. I think us all being around each other mm. for, for so long was something that helped at that. Because I think, um, well, I'll speak for myself, I think I kind of came bit more of like the examples you're talking about at the beginning of the process I probably wasn't showing as much vulnerability and like <laughs> wait know. pause wait, what happened was he being like oh I, I can't do this I'm too nice for this oh, Shani, 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 Shani you can oh, you know I mean? no, <laughs> this, this, guy, this guy likes to bait me out so <laughs> you're actually so giving the mic to bait you out okay no, so, Eleven, that's my brother. Go on, you made it now. Yeah, you got yeah, the one yeah, really yeah. now. Yeah, all right, brother. So, listen. <laughs> <laughs> so, I just remember, um, I think this was, what, our final audition? Yeah. <laughs> our final audition, um, I think we were very, it was us five, it was me, you, Tien, Gabe, and Juan. And it was like a couple hours, a couple hours of like, just, you know, it goes on in auditions. But um, TN was just very, all of us were quite excited, quite bubbly, not sure whether we had the role or what was going on, to be fair. And it was a very, yeah. Was, and TN was just there. Like, he was on the couch one time, just patiently just waiting, just chilling, not really saying much, which was like, I was thinking, is he not as excited as I am right now? But it was like, I think that was like, very early days and we didn't necessarily know each other and I don't know what was going through his mind at the time but once we did get the role and once you've like spent some time I think all of us started to come out of our show a little bit more mm. and then eventually we were, became somewhat inseparable mm. for, and like it was it was so weird it was it was magical in a sense because these were guys that I had met when I was been like just over a year now mm. and it's it's such that's such a small amount of time if you really put Put it together, yeah. but the way we just got different sides of ourselves out of each other, mm. and we're able to to bring that to our characters. As much as we're acting and playing the role, we 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 felt each other's we felt each other the arcs that his character may go mm. through, it used his character may go through, and it was it it was so good to actually understand not just the character but each other, mm -hmm. and just to to bring that to the screen was just like an amazing feeling. So yeah. And whenever I'm around RTN, he's always speaking, so it's different. Yeah. That's very nice. Bless nice. And that's a nice um, <laughs> summary. <of that. laughs> and, and then Delove, you bring in the female energy, because obviously in that time it was very male-dominated, yeah. but this is a story about the brothers, but you come in and bring some lightness and joy and um, keep them straight, I think. Yeah, I was really hard on them, you know. Yeah, I was. Oh. I was I'm joking. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess that's a question for them. Like, how was I... Is that your question? It's not like fitting in with this yeah, space, fit, because obviously... Oh, it's a, into yeah, the, like as an actor they, coming into this space, that's yeah. a story for mostly for guys, but then obviously you're bringing in your elements to yeah. it. Yeah, I, I loved uh, me and the guys. They met, they welcomed me so well, mm. and I felt very much comfortable straight away. It's like we just got on so well. It's like we knew each other, mm. um, like we met before. Um, and it was nice just, like, seeing how they work and how close they get. Um, 
we, we would have like so many like funny conversations and stuff. Rehearsals was nice. It felt really natural. Mm. Um, and yeah, it was just nice to just bond. Teresa Coco, um, <laughs> she wrote the script and obviously I don't know if you guys had seen Rocks before. Yes. Yeah, so that's yes. powerful amazing film mm -hmm. that I love so much. But yeah, this energy is in the script and in working with someone like Teresa, what was that like for you as young actors, working with Teresa and developing your skills and craft on a script like this and a project like this? Um, it was so natural, mm. like so, so, so natural. To see words that have been written on a piece of paper, but they regurgitate as reality, it's great. Like to me, it's just crazy without any flaws or anything. The way we spoke, the way she was able to capture the moment of 2001, everything, the essence, it was, it was, it was very, very amazing. Um, yeah, I have. Um, I think, yeah, I, always, I said this to her the other day as well. I think we were just so lucky to have her. How, how a, much a part of the show that she was from, she was in our first audition, the first time I auditioned for Grand Kids, she was there telling me everything I needed to know about Junior, how, how he is, how, what just happened in the scene before when I hadn't even read anything. So yeah, no, throughout the whole process, Teresa was really the, the rock, I think, that we could always go to, ask her questions about character, ask her questions about anything really. So yeah, no, I think having Teresa on this project, I think it helped us, not just as actors, but as like people getting through the days and just working. So yeah, no, lucky, that is the words I would use yeah, for lucky. sure. Yeah, yeah, lucky. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Um, uh, it was really, really, really nice having another black woman, woman on, on set because I felt safe. I felt really like I could trust her with, you know, this is her script, you know, so she knows the characters more than we do. And um, she was just really helping with the way I should bring the character to life, especially um, back in the early 2000s. I didn't know how um, women were back then, um, but being black with natural hair and everything was really nice. And she was just so supportive throughout the whole thing. Last thing I'd like to say as well, she helped us feel so safe and comfortable mm. as well. Being new and being black in this environment, there's certain things that you don't know whether you're doing right or wrong or how far you can, you can step. And Teresa always made it like her duty of care to look after us and make sure that, like the characters, we was always we was always okay. And I would say, as an auntie, like <laughs> keep that because it's not you're not going to experience that on 100%. every set you go through. 100%. Yeah. And so the, what you learned and what you gained from this project definitely carry that with you because it's 100%. not always going to be as safe. But you know that there are people out there also that support you, and that's why it's important to have like diverse crews and storytellers that can relate to or make you understand like will relate to your experiences and that you can connect with it. For the last and finally, um, what song best captures Grime Kids for you? Of, and it has to be from these from my old school days. Oh, yeah, I can, I can, and I am. Yes, I can. I'm, I'm gonna say everyone's answer from now. I'm gonna say 21 seconds. That's too easy. No, no, no. It has to be. But, uh, it has to be. That's too easy. <laughs> I feel like it, but there were so many tunes in the in the series. I was just like raving in my seat. No, um, um, come on. T and I feel like you're thinking. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. 21 seconds. But, wait. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, but I was thinking about the actual question, a song that captures what about Yeah, like just what makes you, when you think about Grime Kids yeah. and that moment, that time, that era. I probably, I, I probably would think about one of like the Lovers Rock songs or something okay. that was in the show okay. that played That's probably, probably in my own character's house or mm -hmm. something, just cause it, like, it reminds me, it reminds me about Bishop's family there, but also the family aspect of when the boys are all together. Yeah. Um, I don't remember the name of the song, but we got a good thing going, yeah. Yeah. real good. Yeah, do you know what I'm saying? Like, I think that's that's a good song to, to speak on, like the dynamic between the boys or what they want to happen and like, the aspirational time that they were living in. I think we can end on that. Mm -hmm. Well, thank Finish. you guys for talking to the British <laughs> Blacklist. <laughs> thank you. I'm really, really thank excited you. to see you. Lot's journey. And I'm a proud auntie over here. <laughs> thank you.